So in this video, we are going to use geometry script to displace our meshes. So a lot of people have been asking me how you do displacement inside Unreal Engine 5. And there are many ways to do that. I mean, you can use the new virtual textures and the height field mesh, but that is like way too much work. And that is also not accurate. I mean, you are not displacing the geometry itself in that. So like this is a very quick and easy setup. And I use this workflow a lot in my environments. So geometry script is a new feature of Unreal Engine 5 that lets you access all the modeling features in Blueprint. This is one way of using geometry script. Geometry script is very vast and you can use it to create all kinds of different things. But in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use geometry script to create a basic blueprint, which you can use to add displacement. Before we start the video, I would like to thank all the people who support the channel on Patreon. So thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot. Okay. So first of all, we are going to need a texture for this. So you can use any open source website that you want. I'll recommend this website. So you can download any texture that you like. Now, when it comes to downloading these maps, these texture maps, we are going to need all the maps that are required for the PBR workflow. So we are going to need the diffuse, the displacement, the normal, which is the direct X one and the roughness. Download all of these textures in the PNG file format. So once you have downloaded these textures, let's import them inside the engine. So you can right click in the content browser and you can import all of those textures. So our textures have been imported. So this is our color texture. This is the roughness texture. This is the normal map. And lastly, we have the displacement map. So after importing these textures, let's combine these textures into a material. So to create a material, you can right click and create a material there. You can call it whatever you like. So this is the material editor. So now let's add these textures and assign them to the appropriate slot. So I'm going to assign the base color to the base color slot. Next, we are going to add the normal map. Add it into the normal slot. After that, you can add the roughness map. And let's add that into the roughness slot. We are not going to use the displacement map because we are going to displace the geometry itself rather than displacing it at a shader level. So our material is looking pretty good now. So let's close this material. So now to access the displacement functionality, we need to enable the geometry script plugin. So go to the plugins and enable this plugin. After enabling that, you can right click in the content browser and then you can add a blueprint. Now, trust me when blueprints are involved, like people feel that it's really complex, but they're not that complex. I'll try to explain everything and we are not going to do any programming as such. I mean, this will be very straightforward. So in the blueprints right here in the all classes, we are going to search for generated dynamic mesh actor. So make sure that you select the appropriate one, select it and create it. So this will be called dynamic mesh. Now you can open up the blueprint. After opening the blueprint, you can go to the event graph, select all of these nodes and press your delete key. Now you can go to the left here where it says functions and we need to create a function override. So we need an event called rebuild generated event. So this event is going to be called whenever your mesh is updated. You will understand what I mean by this. Now, if you have any experience with blenders, geometry nodes, this works in a very similar way. So basically what we are going to do is we are going to first generate our mesh. And that's really easy. I mean, there's a node for that. So if you drag off from the target mesh, you can search for append. So here you can append a lot of different things. You can append a box. You can append a sphere. So let's append a box. You need to compile and save this. And if you go to the viewport, you will see that we have a cube right here. So the node that we added, the append box node is basically creating this cube right here. So this is really similar to Houdini. If you are familiar with that, 
and I feel that having such procedural workflows inside Unreal Engine itself will be a huge time saver. So now that we know how to like create meshes, we need to create a plane to apply our texture and to displace the plane. So for the plane, we are going to add a rectangle. And as you can see, we have a rectangular plane in the viewport. Back to the event graph. You will also notice that we have some properties here. So that's the scale of the mesh on each axis. And these properties will be different for different uh, meshes. Like if you add a sphere, you'll have a radius parameter right here. So now what we are going to do is we are going to promote some of these properties to a variable. And this is going to allow us to access them in the editor itself. So after we have added a plane, we need to subdivide the plane, right? Because the plane currently has like only a few polygons and we need a lot of polygons to displace the mesh itself. So just search for tessellation and we are going to use apply PN tessellation here. We have the property called tessellation level. So this is the subdivision level. I'm going to set that to 10. And if you go to the wireframe view, you can see that we have subdivided the mesh 10 times. So if I set this to a lower number, you can see that we have less polygons now. So we are going to promote this to a variable as well. In this node, you also have some additional options. So if you want to see all of those options, you can right click on them and you can split the struct. So basically you can like expand all of those options. So now that we have tessellated our mesh, we are going to displace the mesh. So just search for displace and we're going to use the apply displace from texture map. So we have the texture right there. You can promote that to a variable as well. Again, these are variables. So you can rename all of these variables in the variables panel. So basically what we have done here is we have created a rectangle. That's the plane. Then we have subdivided the plane and after subdividing it, after tessellating it, we have displaced it. Now, one more thing that we need to do here is that we need to set all of these variables as public. Let's add this in the scene. If you'll take a look in the details panel, you'll notice that we can see all of our variables. So you can change any of these variables and that is going to update in real time. You could also tessellate the mesh. So let's do that. Let's go to the wireframe view to see it better. And as you can see, you can like dynamically tessellate this. So after you have a good amount of tessellation, let's apply the material. So select the material in the content browser, then select the plane and you can click that button to assign the material. And you'll notice that we don't have any displacement going on. This is still flat. So there are two reasons that this is not working. First, we need to apply the displacement texture itself because currently the texture slot is empty. So let's apply the displacement texture. Still, we are not getting any displacement. Our displacement strength is a bit too low. Let's open up the blueprint and in the blueprint, we are going to split the advanced options right here. And we have an option for options magnitude. So you can right click and promote that to a variable, make it public. This is basically the magnitude of the displacement. So this is like the displacement multiplier. And if you set this to a high number, you can see that we are getting displacement. So now you can use this one blueprint and swap out different materials and different displacement maps to create and like uh, tessellate meshes in real time. Lastly, we are going to learn how to apply Nanite to this and bake this as a mesh. So this is a dynamic mesh. And this is a blueprint, so we can't add Nanite to blueprints. We'll have to convert this procedural mesh into a static mesh. We are going to go in the Modelings panel. And right here under the Transform, we have an option to convert. So click on the Convert option. We are going to convert this to a static mesh. 
and you can transfer the materials as well down here you can save it in the current folder so i'm going to quickly create a new folder called meshes make sure that this folder is opened after that you can click accept You can open it. So just enable Nanite. Apply the changes. Now this is like any other static mesh and you can duplicate this and create your level. So this is how you can create a procedural tool. And this helps a lot when it comes to like environment art and level design. Like it really speeds up your workflow. So as you can see, displacement adds a whole another level of realism to your scene so yeah that's it i hope you learned something in this video if you did please leave a like down below also check out my patreon page subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and that's it i'm going to see you in the next video